Hey guys, welcome back to Insomniac Stream. Not gonna be too much to this intro as usual, but uh, this is the video for how I created my Children of the Forest look from Game of Thrones. This was a very long paint, so let's hope I succeeded in editing this down for you, because I don't think anyone really wants to watch a 12 hour video. So let's see how I did. And uh, yeah, if you wanna see how to do this, just keep watching. So the first thing I did, as with my White Walker tutorial, was to block down my brows since, uh, again, we need to make an entirely new brow shape since the actors for these makeups actually have brow prosthetics on, so we're gonna cheat that. And to block my brows down, all I did was use the glue stick method, taking a water-soluble glue stick, running it over your hairs and combing them out, and then using a spatula and many layers of the glue, flattening it out and just repeating the step over and over until you can touch the brows and not really feel the texture of the hairs. And while I was waiting for the last layers of the glue to dry, I decided to sketch out where the different branches and roots will go along my neck and chest. For these, I was looking at the pictures of the season six Children of the Forest, but I was not specifically referencing Leaf, who is the one Children of the Forest that you actually kind of have a name for. Um, I was looking at a bunch of them together and kind of mixing this whole look into one. But something they do seem to have in the later seasons is an outfit that seems to be constructed of tree roots, branches, and leaves. So that's what I was going for here. Then over the brows to fully cover them, I just used an under eye corrector that has a peach tone to it to block out the color of my brows and then went over it again with a concealer closer to my skin tone and just blended it out with a sponge and that meant I could move on to skin tone. So for the skin tone of my Children of the Forest, I like that they have a very earthy natural tone but it does have a green tinge to it. So I used a color stick from Makeup Forever. This was in M104. And then I was just using a foundation brush to fully blend it out and smooth it into my skin, being very mindful of the brow area, trying to press the color in that area more than drag it because you don't want to risk lifting the glue and brow covering that you've already done. And then of course, just carry that color down your neck and into any sections that you think the skin tone is going to show through, but you don't need to be super thorough since we're going to be adding a lot of detailing later on. And because this is a cream product, you want to set it with a translucent setting powder. Just try and get rid of some of the tackiness and push the cream product down so that it stays in place. And then to start adding more definition to the face, I was using a really warm tone bronzer to start contouring. You should never usually contour with bronzer since they're warm tone, but that actually kind of worked for this look specifically. So I want to create pretty strong cheekbone shapes since they have a very defined bone structure. And then I also ran this along the sides of my forehead and along my jawline. Now, as with my White Walker, I'm going to again try to cheat the brow bone area since we do not have a prosthetic. But the cheat for this one is more to make it look flat and make the brow still look a little bit lower. So what I did for that is use a brown shadow and pull it along the top of my eye area, but keeping it kind of a flat shape and pulling it underneath where my brows actually would be. And then I was able to go in with a black gel liner and a matte shadow over top and start smoking it out towards that shape just to give that really deep recessed eye look. And then I also used a little bit of that black shadow just on that inner and outer corner eye section to again create a deeper shadow where the brow would technically be sitting over top of the eye shape. To then start detailing above the brows, I was using a brown water activated face paint from Mehron. And this is where I mean that I wasn't fully referencing Leaf since she just has a pretty bare brow area. Um, I actually was looking at some of the other ones in their designs and they have very textured foreheads and brow sections. So I started kind of combining all of them together. And then along the cheekbones, they also have a very weird, I wanna say like dragon scale bark texture going on. So that's what I was attempting to build up on the sides. A lot of this was just sketchy line work at best, but if it gets the texture you're after, then don't fix what isn't broke. And then the skin was looking a little too perfect and blemish free. So I decided to change that by taking a ripped up makeup sponge and throwing some of the brown color stick from Makeup Forever and just dabbing that all over my face so it had a lot more texture going on. And then also don't forget to line your bottom waterline and blend it out with a black shadow. Be sure to carry that beautiful skin texture down your neck and onto shoulders and chest as well because we need a nice all over skin tone to make our child of the forest the most beautiful that there is. 
And then for detailing above the brows and along the cheeks, it was kind of similar in the different builds up that I actually did with my White Walker. I started with a brown shadow and put this into areas that I wanted to be fully recessed as well as just redefine some of the lines that I had laid out. And then I followed that up with a black shadow to make it even deeper. And the last step was to actually add some highlighting. For the highlighting, instead of using like a white eyeshadow, which you could use if you wanted a really soft highlight, I wanted mine to be pretty strong and stand out. So I was using a water activated face paint as well for this. And then just kind of varying between really opaque white lines and some that were maybe more watered down and softer. And just tried to redefine the areas that would probably be catching light and standing up more. And then while they are different textures, these three steps are actually the same steps I use on the side of the face. First laying down the brown shadow, following with a bit of black for deeper definition, and then using the white to highlight and make the entire area pop. And then finally moving on to the chest. For this, I decided to take a synthetic brush. This is one of my Royal Langnickel ones. It's just a really nice um, domed kind of concealer brush actually. And taking a brown aqua paint, I started laying out all the different roots and vines that I'd kind of sketched in for myself and just fully laying them in. This was a nice easy way to get the thickness pretty even across the board and to lay them all down in the different areas. And this is where you can start knotting them and intersecting them. And then the next few steps, I'm admittedly gonna show you certain sections, but then jump through for you because they take a while. The first being to outline all of the roots with a darker brown aqua paint and a fine detail brush. One thing to note here, as you can see, I actually did cut out part of my shoulders to make it look like the vines go behind my neck. By curling those brown shapes around the imagined made up neck, it'll look like they're kind of floating once I'm against the black background. And then in this design, I did actually also add in two leaves that are kind of the same color. They don't really stand out as being green. They're maybe kind of dead as well. Uh, and so just outline and define everything, making sure that you can kind of tell which ones go on top of each other. And then once you have things more outlined and figured out, you wanna also just add a bunch of different squiggles along the roots or vines themselves to start making that texture of kind of gnarled and curled tree roots. And then once I had that first layer down, I followed along with a black aqua paint and this I applied to certain areas. So not all the way around like an outline anymore, but more to areas that I would think have greater shadowing or that I want to be better defined. And I followed a lot of the same steps, uh, just shading in certain areas and then adding texture with the black as well. And I also used this time to better fully figure out the illusion I was trying to go for along the shoulders. So filling in all of those little areas with black and kind of um, blacking out the back section made it so I was able to better see what I was trying to create. And then of course we still need way more definition and how do we do that with shading? <laughs> Sorry, that was cheesy. Um, but I just took a black eyeshadow and started adding this to all the areas that I want to be darker, especially paying attention to all the areas where the roots are overlapping and knotting. If you make the sections where they're coming out from underneath, the darker sections, then it's gonna make it more obvious that they are the more recessed vines, roots, whatever they are. <laughs> and uh, you can then also add a little bit of shading along the whole thing since the different textures on the roots would be catching and reflecting different amounts of light as well as making other areas darker. Here I was just basing out a little bit of detail on the leaves, but I kind of jumped back and forth around the leaves. I never did them all at once. So kind of figuring out the little bit of leaf veins that are going on them with the black, and then I'll add some shadow later. And then much like above the brows and on my cheekbones, I of course could not resist going in with the white aqua paint and highlighting all of the roots and vines. 
And again, for this, I tried to kind of keep them focused on areas that I think would be catching light and be standing out more, but I also used this to help even better define the separation of all the different branches. So areas that would have been over top, in the same way I was shading the lower ones, I now was highlighting the lines that go over top so that they stand out. I also did want to add some shading under some of the branches to make it look like they were sitting up off the skin a little bit and casting a shadow onto my neck and chest. So I was just using the same black shadow for that and putting it in certain areas. Then for all the sections that were in between the roots, um, I can't quite tell what the material is supposed to be. The best I could come up with was like it's meant to be some like trash bag leaf couture. Also, quick kitty break, always necessary. Hello, Alice. So what I did for this was lay down some dark brown shadows first, followed along with some olive toned shadows, and then went ahead and went in right with the deepest black and put that all along the edges. And then using my Mehron Olive Aqua Paint, I started creating these little lines and folds and curves that I was seeing in the reference images and kind of laying those down as a highlight with the olive and then using the black to really shade and hopefully bring those areas to life a little bit. I was honestly just trying to add texture. That was the only thing that was going through my head. And if this made something that looked like a texture, I was really happy by this point. So that is kind of the best description I can give for what I was doing here. But essentially I was just creating like little pockets with the lightness of the olive and then the darkness of the black shadow. And that was pretty much it. And then as I was doing with the two branches on the intersection of my neck, I was also adding shadow to the piece that went off on the side of my arm. Again, just really wanted to kind of make it look like it was floating and sitting up off the skin. And this was kind of a fun challenge as were many techniques in this look because I don't really do cast shadows in a lot of my looks. So I want to get better at it. And this was a fun attempt at it. And then also my last little bit of detailing to the leaves was just to add some highlight all along the edges to make it look a little bit better defined and a little bit more interesting. For the lips, I used a NYX Wicked Lippy in the color Risqué, which is a iridescent green. And I just patted over it a little bit of the olive shadow I was using on the chest, as well as some black on the outer edges, just to give them a little bit more definition. And then the wig is a blast from the past. This is from my forest spirit look, which was in 2016 and still had the braids in it because I have not done anything with this wig. So I figured it was good to use for this since I didn't really care what happened to it. So I added all the braids into curls, added some gray hairspray to dull it out a bit so it would match and then added a little bit of fake moss into the hair with some hairspray. Last step was to throw in some contacts. I do not have the exact ones they have, which is unfortunate, but I just threw in the pair that I did have, which is from Primal Lens. They're a little bit more green, not yellow, and they're not half scleras, but they're close. So I did my best. All right, and that is, this is the finished look. Uh, I definitely hope you guys enjoyed seeing how it came to life. If you uh, joined me in stream, it was lovely having you. If you uh, can't make it to Twitch, please don't ever feel bad about that. I am just happy I can bring you guys any content. So thank you guys seriously so, so much for watching. Um, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, or even if you didn't, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is so insanely helpful. You have no, no idea. No, no idea? I don't know. It's late. This is a long stream. I'm tired. <laughs> Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I, of course, will see you next video. And until then, bye guys.